Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to episode 9 of Aimbot, the weekly podcast dedicated to discussing all things video games. I'm your host, Kaif Pape. Now, we're actually back from a month break. Um, and yes, the upload schedule has been inconsistent as hell. But there are many reasons for that. Um, it won't be consistent until episode 10 releases, which is the next episode in a few weeks, um, which I'm still working on finalizing, I guess. And then at that point, we will return to like a, a regular um, weekly schedule at most every two weeks, right? <clears throat> but there are a few things that I had to be sorting out um, in terms of even the format of the show, especially taking into account when I actually have a guest on. There are a few things that I have to do a bit differently, not too much um, differently, and, and kind of put things into segments um, so it's a bit more streamlined. Um, so a part of uh, the whole reason for this long break is, as many of you would know, those who either know me in person or know about my YouTube channel and follow me on YouTube, I have recently gotten monetized on YouTube, so that's that was a big aim of mine for the first part of this year, which I got, which I, I managed to meet that deadline, in addition to work and school and all the other crap that I have going on in my life. But regardless, I managed to meet that deadline, so I'm actually monetized now. And for those of you who do not know, the YouTube channel name is just youtube.com slash Kaif Pape, um, just my name. Uh, and I mostly upload, I pretty much exclusively exclusively upload uh, Path of Exile content. And this is also the home for this podcast as well. Um, so outside of hosting it on my RSS platform, I then upload like a, a video version of the podcast, which just like a still image or in some rare cases like videos. Now, that being said, I got monetized and over the past month, I've been basically analyzing how my videos perform, like the current crop of videos that I actually have up. Uh, so it's primarily just the Path of Exile content that actually attracts any um, significant amount of viewership. So and and I've actually got started to 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 earn from it. Not a lot, like really not a lot, but I've been seeing like a consistent stream of of money coming in, where I can actually gauge uh, at certain points how much I can anticipate to make for a few days or for the month or whatever. So I got monetized on the twenty first of last month as of recording this podcast. It's the 26th. So uh, it's been a month and a few days, pretty much a month. And um, I saw consistent increases in terms of money I was making. But I, it got to a certain point where the money was just decreasing. I was like, what the fuck is going on? So after a few days, I started getting and disgruntled isn't even the right word. I was pretty much upset and just bewildered as to why um, this estimated revenue or whatever is suddenly decreasing. Uh, it was like five days or so just watching it and just like being over this whole, this whole f focusing on YouTube stuff. But then I realized that I was doing something completely stupid and I was looking at the revenue for the last 28 days and not necessarily the overall revenue or the revenue for the last three months or, or whatever. So how it works, once you sign into your YouTube studio, you will always see the revenue for the last 28 days. So <clears throat> any new revenue is just appended to that. And then like, so day 28 would replace the, the previous day one and so on and so forth. So it will, it will always, rem unless you get like a huge spike, it will always either remain the same based on the amount of money you average out daily or it will even decrease. 
But all you need to do is expand it to show 90 days and you will be able to see the earnings from the previous days. So that's what I did. And uh, yay, I actually saw the correct amount of money that I should be earning and it lifted my spirits again. Anyway, yeah, so with that out of the way, I'm monetized and I will be putting a lot more effort into actual YouTube content, still not skimping on the um, podcast after we return to the regular schedule because the podcast, I mean, I still get some views, like a couple of hundred in cases, which I, I really appreciate. And if somebody will be willing to just listen to me, mostly just talk about games um, and, and just outside of Path of Exile, then I'm all for that. And as the channel grows, this podcast should, not should, will grow hand in hand. So I'll be able to, to um, access um, like better networks, get, get more people on the show, like-minded people and stuff like that. And in addition to all that, I've just been dealing with real life. So I have school and pr- exams pretty much every week and work I'm honestly not complaining because in some cases I actually don't mind um, having a lot of stuff to do I just write down I have like a whiteboard of stuff that I need to get done and I just write down everything that I need to get done and just check them off assign dates and stuff like that Um, and I've been pretty much on schedule for the most part for those things that are like deadline oriented yeah so speaking of actual deadlines when it when it when it comes to that stuff, I have a video that I'm I'm working on a pretty major video for the channel. It is related to stuff that I currently do, but it's not the same format. It's a bit different, and it's something that um should be able to reach a wider amount of audiences. And I'm going to be. I'm I'm hoping that video is well received. It's probably another month or so before that comes out. Um, two weeks to a month. I'm hoping that video is well received because, um, like I said, it will be a video that's really interesting and people will be able to come back to it for for very specific reasons. Um, so with that out of the way, um, I hope you all have been doing great. Um, when this is posted on the, the YouTube channel, you guys can actually utilize the comment section below and we can just chat back and forth i pretty much reply to every single comment even on my most popular video which by the way is now over a hundred thousand views and has almost like almost 600 comments at this point so i'm really happy about it anyway let's get into um the whole point of this podcast and let's start out with a new segment which is basically this week in gaming so this week in gaming We'll cover the new releases um, and stuff that have either come out this week or pretty much close to this week. And first up on the list is Biomutant. So it's probably the most notable game from the bunch of this week's releases. Uh, It's out this week for PS4, Xbox One and PC. And it's basically an open world action RPG-ish type game. Where you control some critter-like biomutant creature. It looks interesting. Um, the graphics looks look solid. Um, the whole open world, uh, whole open world aspect of the game looks solid. It's not necessarily my cup of tea because <clears throat> how do I put this? I'm not necessarily interested. <clears throat> uh, I don't want to come off as being disrespectful, but. I'm not necessarily interested in playing an open world game where I run around as like a rat or a mongoose <clears throat> or I mean that doesn't seem like I jump into games to either feel a bit more powerful or ent- engage in a universe which you know takes me outside of the regular day to day stuff that you have to deal with in in life and in my fantasy world um being like I'm a mongoose or, or a giant rat rat isn't isn't what I I'd, I'd want for myself. Even if like as a rat I have like superhuman um powers I pr- I'd probably be a raccoon. I like raccoons, but there's no raccoon in this game. It's just 
it's just a rat's arm <laughs> rat's arm on goo so so that's interesting for people who like rats next up we have saints row the third that's getting a remaster that's dropping this week for next gen consoles uh i'm guessing if you're into gaming you know what saints row is it's basically just like a a very outlandish version of grand theft auto where they're just over the top with everything so last year it's a really old game but it's getting remastered so if you like that or you want to revisit it you've never had the chance to play it before and it's your cup of tea then this week is when you have a chance to, to grab it if you have like a ps5 or an xbox series x which we will definitely get into later um and then there are a bunch of other um pretty much un unknown games so i won't necessarily go into that stuff but even though these aren't this week's releases they were released within like two weeks ago and i feel they deserve to be mentioned since the crop of interest in games for this week is pretty much non-existent and the first on the list is resident evil village or resident evil 8 if you want to put it that way um, it was released on May 7th and has been getting solid reviews all around, averaging in the 80s on Metacritic. So if you're into Resident Evil or just horror games overall, it's a definite must-have. It's available on all platforms, last and current gen. And it has this gigantic woman in there, which, which everybody seems to be going crazy over, this, this huge, huge woman. Um, so, so check it out. Uh, we also have Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which was released on May 14th for PS4, Xbox One, and PC, but can be played on next-gen consoles as well, utilizing like the inbuilt back compat features. So that's a great way to replay all three games if you want to revisit that series. Um, you will see some pretty significant performance game gains, sorry, if you're playing on on the next-gen consoles. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, and Days Gone saw its PC release on May 18th, which according to Digital Foundry is a pretty solid release. Um, again, if you were interested in Days Gone and you didn't have a PlayStation 4 um, or you don't have a PlayStation 5 currently, it's now on PC. It's pretty much following the, the, the same trend of Sony first party titles slowly coming out to on PC, I think Horizon Zero Dawn was um, did it uh, a few months ago, and um, it it is a very solid uh, port, if you would. Not much new stuff in the way of interest in games, and most of these games are either re-releases or remasters, but that's the state of gaming nowadays, which perfectly segues into the main topic for this week's podcast which is next-gen hardware shortage and pretty much Sony's struggles. So, everyone has seen the memes by now of how difficult it is to get a PS5 and stuff. Um, I don't own a PS5 and I do not see myself realistically getting one anytime soon. Um... Even if you live in the States, a lot of persons do not, out of all, because I have a, a lot of international friends, and out of all the crop of international friends that I have, it's probably just a single person. No, that's not true. I know two persons that have PS5s, and um, it, it's, it's like that, like right across the board. Uh, it's there's shortage um for Series X as well, um, but it's impacting Sony more than any other um of the console manufacturers. And uh, well, Sony has recently come out to acknowledge their lack of PS5 stock, and have said the shortage could run into 2022. Yes, into so so next year this time we could still be in the same boat that we're in now where pretty much no one can get a ps5 so they've said that this shortage is due to the global chip shortage now these same chips 
or variations of them are the same chips that power other next-gen consoles. They power computers, computer systems in modern vehicles, mobile phones, and a ton of other devices. So Sony is not just competing with Microsoft and Nintendo, but also every major tech company in the business. Now, this isn't a problem specific to Sony itself. Microsoft is suffering the same fate to a certain degree, but there's a much bigger reason that this affects Sony more than the other competitors. Besides the fact that just more persons buy PlayStations. <laughs> I mean, if there are like many polls out there, most of it and if you're comparing the two, Sony is the better selling platform. Going back to PS4, I think the 360 outsold the PS3, but we've long gone past that. So more people in general prefer PlayStations because they have exclusives. Um, and then even then, most persons that I uh, affiliate with, they're Sony fanboys. And even rich persons who can afford to buy both. If you're going to get one, most persons typically go to, to try and get Sony because you can typically get everything that Microsoft has to offer on a PC. And even now with, um, with what the hell is that thing called that Microsoft has? Anyway, this is this thing where you can get all the games and play on like any device. Yeah, so with that note in the picture, then you, can, you don't really have to worry about missing out on, on Microsoft exclusives. So Sony has more um, demand right now and, and they're, they won't be able to meet that demand. They're not foreseeing being able to meet that demand until 2022. No, that's, it's good that they came out and acknowledged that and have given persons realistic expectations um, on, unlike when to expect basically like how we have a ps4 in pretty much every household now for anyone that wants it you can just go to a store and a ps4 will be there it won't be like sometime next year probably even at the end of next year like around christmas season where that will be possible for playstation 5 now saying that is one thing but there's actually a bigger issue now I mean, now that it's all but confirmed that there will be a continued shortage of the PS5s for the next year or two, just what does this mean for developers? Because we're thinking about this as consumers, but persons make these games, they have investors, and they have to make their money back. So will first party next gen only titles even be a thing or... Will we continue to get cross-platform first-party titles for the next year or two? And could Microsoft have even seen this coming? Um, since before the official launch of next-gen consoles, Microsoft said it would be focusing a lot on cross-gen with innovations like smart delivery that allows the purchase of one last-gen version of the game that can be accessed on all platforms, next-gen included. So this means you can get the best optimized version of each game for each specific console, whether you bought it on Xbox One, the new Series X or Series S. And they even confirmed, Microsoft, that they wouldn't have any next-gen only exclusives for a few years. So when this, when this was first um, announced, like Microsoft's approach, Many persons, including myself, definitely myself included, didn't like this approach. I was like, why the fuck are you going to hold back next-gen games by limiting, by also enabling them to be played on cross-platform? What do I mean by this? There are certain aspects of next-gen gaming that sh just will flat out not be possible on, um, you can call it last-gen, but... <laughs> because of the shortage and, and stuff. I guess it's current gen for most persons. But there are certain aspects of gaming, like a wide, expansive um, open world with no loading screens or anything like that. That is just not um, 
possible on older platforms. Fast travel as well, certain fast travel systems, or if you were to implement a teleport type system, that will not be possible on last gen games. So looking at the new Ratchet and Clank a Rift Apart, a lot of what is going on in that game, that's a Sony game, mind you, it is really impossible to think that um, that is manageable on a PS4. Unless they go in the back end, go in the code and, and rewrite exactly how everything is written. So as a developer, you have to create your new game taking into account the limitations of next gen. Of, of last gen, sorry, and create these next gen games still within the parameters of last gen. What do I mean by that? You create the games with like higher res resolution textures and more realistic stuff and, and more animations and probably just scale down the the resolution and the textures for last gen. Um, but you'll have a prettier game and probably enable features like ray tracing and stuff on the next gen consoles. But you wouldn't necessarily have anything innovative or you will um you won't see a huge jump in terms of graphics from um, ps4 to ps5 or from xbox one to, to series x right so that whole significant jump where you can say yes this is definitely next gen this is not possible on last gen at all so something like god of war on on ps4 compared to how God of War was on PS3. The God of War on PS4 is completely not possible on PS3. That's a significant jump. Things like physically based rendering and um, global illumination and stuff like that are not possible on those last-gen consoles. A lot of these next-gen-only technologies will just simply not come out or will be used sparingly, like really sparingly, if you are developing a game with last-gen in mind. So... When Microsoft decided to take this approach, a lot of persons was like, that, that's just ridiculous. And we were thinking about what this could mean for Microsoft um, back then and what co it could mean for Microsoft and, and their potential um, developers in the future because Microsoft went on to acquire a tons of de developers. I think the most popular one, which was like $7 billion, I think, was um, Bethesda, and Bethesda has like a bunch of other smaller developers under them. Um, so Microsoft went on this spree of acquiring developers to to just pump out as many games and have a larger variety of games, because I'm I'm guessing Microsoft was pretty much known for sh for shooters. So everybody saw Microsoft's approach and questioned their approach, and questioned the limitations of their approach and was that smart. So yeah, Microsoft probably just saw this coming. I don't know how that would have been possible. Um, it could have been just, um, I guess we'd call it here in Jamaica, buck-ups. I, I mean, it could have been a coincidence or it could have been a genuinely informed decision that persons would either just not have the money to have um, that much uh, penetration of next-gen systems in homes or there would be would have been a shortage of actual hardware chips circuit boards things of that nature to be able to produce um that quantity of next gen um consoles so you might be wondering yeah, yeah you get the point what's the, what's the point so now back to sony sony had a very different and traditional sony approach with a focus on big budget exclusives for the ps5 but it can now mean that developers may have to cut back on some of those features that would not be possible cross-gen or shoehorn in last-gen versions to maximize potential profits. So if a developer creates a game, they're aiming to reach as many persons as possible, especially if the audience is already limited with it being an exclusive title. So for argument's sake, if 500 PS5s are out in the wild, but 1 million PS4s are still being used, which is the vast majority, wouldn't it be in a developer's best interest to make their title cross-platform, regardless of their initial aspirations? The fact that Sony doesn't see an immediate fix for this shortage also further compounds the whole situation. So, <clears throat> basically... 
um, I mentioned Ratchet and Clank before. It was at the time put out there as a PS5 only game, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. Now they may have to go back in and change things about that game to be able f- to to let it run on PS4, or I don't know, maybe Microsoft can compensate them somehow to to for the lack of PS5s already out there because if I'm not Microsoft, Sony, sorry. Because if I'm the developer, I want, even if I'm a Sony-owned developer, right? I want to be able to give my staff bonuses based on the amount of consoles, um, the amount of, of games that hit the console and the amount of games that we we sell overall. Just like, uh, what was that bullshit game the other day? Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk made a truckload of money, even with Sony removing it completely from the the Sony stores the game still made so much fucking money that everybody ate a huge chunk of the pie so those investors and those top bosses all made ridiculous bonuses even um following the negative um flack that that game um got because that game was a fucking shit show when it released and at the end of the day the investors got back their money and then some. All right, so even though gaming is fun and it's entertainment, it is still a business. A person still need to earn money, feed their families, I mean, buy goodies with their bonuses and, and all that shit. Um, and I'm just worried now that a lot of these so um, PS5 only games will one either get pushed back to like 2022 or 2023 to be um stripped down to accommodate last gen or three be released in whatever state they're in and then a comical version of the same game is then released on ps4 which again going back to like the whole cyberpunk those developers pretty much at some point knew that this thing was just not going to run on ps4s and, and xbox ones but it still released this fucking shitty ass version of the game I do not want that to be how Sony approaches their games. So it's a very de- delicate situation. Um, providing content, providing exclusives for your audience, the, your audience, so those persons who have already bought um, PS5s. Because if you look at it, no, besides the Demon Souls remake, which is fucking gorgeous, but it's still a remake, everything else was playable on um ps4 as well so miles was playable on ps4 what else was there there's a bunch of other shit except for that like atv type battle type shit in free game that came out i'm guessing but pretty much there's only been like one ps5 on the game uh that's like a real title i mean i know that stuff like return all came out but even though Returnal is like a $70 game, it's not a, a real game. In, I mean, it's not a triple A game, I'll say that. It's a roguelike, which is just replaying this, the same old fucking shit over and over again. But it's not a triple A title, something up there with like uh, even Days Gone or God of War or something like that. Aside from that, whatever you're playing now on your PS5 is pretty much what you can play on your PS4 anyway. Just with better performance. Now, I personally want a PS5, regardless of the price. I just want to be able to go in a store and see a bunch of PS5s just lined out. Just like I see a bunch of PS4s and Nintendo Switches and Xboxes lined out. I have zero interest in a Series X. And certainly not that bullshit Series S. So I'm not really speaking on Microsoft's shortage. And like I said, they already had a certain approach. They're probably going to be just fine. But Sony, Sony is is probably in a serious decision making process now. And um, these chip manufacturers, it's not like you can just go to somebody else and say, all right, start creating these chips for me now. There are probably like um about five of these guys in the in, like in the entire world 
five of these large chip manufacturers in the entire world. And they provide chips like for everything. I said it before, for all these smartphones, for all these new cars or anything. If your car breaks down now on the road, it's it's pretty much a computer that's driving your vehicle right now. It's not like back in the old days where you can just flip up the trunk and um and just get to work and try and fix shit on your own. Everything is computer driven now. Just like your cell phones, right? So you unless more of these manufacturers crop up or there's some way to ramp up production with the rate at how everything is just going completely digital in the entire world right now. There are bound to be shortages um, in these chip manufacturers and we are going to get to a point where we're running out of these rare earth minerals which are mined and used in these um, in these chips or these circuit boards. We're going to get to a point where we're starting to run out of these rare earth minerals or we're just going to start employing really dangerous practices. I mean, if you know anything about how these minerals are um, are mined, it is already a super dangerous practice. So now just imagine that being like tripled in terms of they're not being able to supply enough for the demand and persons just going all out to get whatever it is that they want. Okay, but so not to get a bit off topic in terms of the chip manufacturing process alone, but um, I'm just really concerned for Sony because I want to see, I want to look at a video game regardless of if I have it in my own possession or not and say, finally, that is definitely next gen shit. That shit cannot run on any PS4 or any Xbox One or One X at all. I want to get to that. No, I want to get to that point. I mean, it's still it's still early days, but I want to get to that point where the significant leap is there. And like I said, even if I don't have it, just analyzing that, just just gushing over it and and watching say watching different analysis videos and streamers and stuff like that because a person's it might seem weird to a lot of persons out there but there are some persons who actually enjoy just watching games being played which is why streamers make so much fucking money and you don't necessarily want to just continue watching um, the same lame graphics over and over again, or it's Minecraft type level graphics. You want to be engaged visually, as well as interacting which, with uh, whatever streamer it is that you follow. Or I don't pr- particularly watch streams. I will watch like um, I watch like a highlight video of a streamer, probably somebody like Doctor Disrespect or Asmon Gold. But I would rather watch like the game reviews, the in depth analysis of the technology behind the games and just to see how that these games became possible. That's the stuff that interests me, the technical stuff behind it. I'm guessing this probably because I come from both an artistic and technical background in terms of what I do for a living. Um, So that is the stuff that that interests me, how persons are able to, to translate what an artist has in his head and like the the whole concept art to getting shit to to looking like actually photorealistic when you're actually controlling the character and how the lighting and the graphics and the materials and the textures how all that stuff responds um especially in a good performing game so um i'm still excited for next gen or current gen or whatever you want to call it but uh, my expectations have been uh a lot no significantly and i wouldn't be surprised if sony is basically forced to adopt the microsoft model of cross-platform game cross-gen games for <clears throat> the next two years or so because that's the state of gaming that we're in now it's just fucking re-releases and um old ass games being Handed to us now at like 60 frames per second or 120 with better textures. It's sad. But um, <clears throat> it is what it is. And 
we still have to be grateful that we actually live in in this modern age where we're able to enjoy stuff like that. I mean, a lot of these games nowadays still have uh, really good graphics and it's almost like you're playing an interactive movie. I just wish that we could squeeze out a bit more out of what's given to us. It's it's like you're given, you are given the latest iPhone or the latest Galaxy or the latest Pixel or whatever, but you're still running like <laughs> Lollipop Android on it, right? The software is limited or the applications are just not taking advantage of anything that the phone is capable of. I guess that's the best analogy I can come up with to show... Um, to like the probably the casual listener, how disappointed I am and how disappointed a lot of persons are with the current what we're currently being offered. Yeah, so that's pretty much been it for me this week and for this week's episode. I hope that everybody out there is enjoying themselves, enjoying these fucking re-release games, <laughs> these um, remasters, quote unquote, higher resolution, same fucking shit we've been playing for the last ten years. Um, <clears throat> or whatever it is you enjoy if it is phone games or shit like Among Us that has no graphics but is fun as fuck to play I hope that everybody is continuing to enjoy themselves oh and especially during this COVID time you can't really go outside still well in my country it's very limited the places you can actually go and how you can actually enjoy yourself and even the movie industry has been impacted to a certain degree so no more than ever we need something to take our minds off the stress and repetition of being cooped up all day and just working eating sleeping and staying inside so if you weren't a gamer before now is the best time to jump in start with something casual who knows maybe you'll become a hardcore gamer whatever it is have fun and continue to enjoy games cheers